I'm going to show you how to uh, mix up your fetch game to make it better for your dog, better for their mental health so that they're not just mindlessly chasing the ball over and over again um, and making them think a little bit more, which will add in a little bit of mental stimulation on top of their physical stimulation. Alright, so standard tennis ball. Um, I actually prefer to use balls on ropes um, and I've got a variety of different ones um, for the tennis balls, but I know a lot of you will use tennis balls, so I'm going to use the same thing. I'm going to use markers uh, here to indicate to the dog that they're on the right track, not on the right track, or that they're allowed to go have the ball. So the markers that you just heard are nope, which is uh, nope, you stuffed it, you don't get rewarded for that. She already understands this command and this marker. If your dog doesn't, um, you might end up teaching your dog through this game. Sit. Good. My good marker tells her that I like what she's doing and she should keep doing it. Again, non-reward marker. I didn't throw the ball for her because she broke. Good. Good marker. Tell her she's on the right track. Yes. And the yes marker is the re reward marker. Yes. Good job. I like balls on ropes because I can add a bit of tug game to it. Sit. Good. So you might start out by simply bouncing a ball or just gently pretending to throw it and then getting the dog to hold their sit. No. Sit. So she broke. I said no. That's a punishment there. No. Again. A reminder of what I wanted her to do. Yes. So yes, Marcus says, you're allowed to go get it. Good cow. I don't like dogs dropping the ball at my feet. I add a little bit more effort and I ask them to bring it back to me to my fingers. Um, I just want the dog to be mindful and to include me in the game. And if they're just dropping it at my feet like I'm some kind of servant, then they're not including me in the game. Drop. Good. So... I also mix up the commands. If my dog has multiple commands or multiple obedience positions, I will use those to reward, uh, to, to proof this dog, I guess. Uh, if I only say sit all the time, she will default to the sit. Good. Nope. Drop. Good. Nope. Drop. As you can see, pretending to throw it harder makes it harder for her to be successful. Good girl. As you can see, I pretended to throw it uh, and she took off and so then I proofed my recall command. So, come. So she took off after it. So if you've got a dog that takes off um, after the ball, even though you haven't thrown it yet, that's a perfect opportunity to practice come, um, which is your recall. And you saw when she came back to me, I rewarded her with the ball. Sit. Good. As you can see, she likes the ball on the road. 
she likes to play tug and she finds that really rewarding so bringing it back to me and playing a game of tug gets her going if your dog likes a bit of tug and ball use a ball on a rope you don't need to just use a boring old ball um, and your dog might find that fetch game far more enjoyable by mixing in a little bit of tug into your game give yes reward the dog for giving me the ball with another bite on the ball or another throw of the ball give good Again, crack the recall. Good girl, give. Sit. As you can see, when I go to throw the ball, I might pretend to throw it quite strongly, which she struggles with, but when I do actually throw it, I make it easier on her so that she has success. We don't want to make it too hard on the dog where they continuously break. We want to build them up. So if your dog sits, if your dog is not ready for you to throw the ball, then you might just sit there and bounce the ball a couple of times. And when the dog holds their sit position, you can say yes, giving the dog permission to go chase the ball. Yes. Again, you can see how I make her work to include me in the game. She was giving me sort of this half past attempt at giving me the ball. She wasn't really trying to put it in my hand and she spit it out a little too quickly and so I was fumbling with it. I dropped it on purpose, multiple times. I make her deliver it back to hand. This is one of the, the elements that I include in a fetch game to make the dogs think and turn their brain on. Drop. Good. in two balls means you can mix it up and make it a little bit more interesting. I also have two balls on a rope here. Um, I just wanted to use a tennis ball for this video. Good. So this is more advanced stuff now, what I'm going to show you. Wait. No. Drop. Yes. Come. No. No. So we're not reward, non reward markers. You watch that up. Go get it. continued going after the ball and didn't stop and come to me. The second time she was a little bit better. Go get it. Um, go get it. Go find it. And then as a reward I'll let her go get the other one again. So that's advanced level work. Your dog might not be ready for that. But if your dog can come from chasing after a ball, then there's a pretty good chance your dog will come from pretty much anything. come so I gave her that non-reward marker no you can't have the ball we've got a lot of history with this marker and with the, the yes markers so we've done a lot of work there and your dog is probably not ready for this yet good girl but if it is awesome start building it in start adding some challenges give I often find that the easier go get the other one go get the other one start teaching a dog to come from the ball being thrown the easier way to do this is Throw the ball. Come. And practice coming away from that other ball first. Good girl. Yep. Go get the other one. Good girl. Yep. Again, I'll show you that. Drop. Drop. Good. teaching that come away from a ball. 
you're throwing the ball one way and the dog's expecting you to say, yes, go get the ball. But then you said, come, and the dog comes to you and you reward it with the second ball. Yes.